Thank you very much, Jane. Today is Budget Day, of course, and this morning we're talking to a former Chancellor, Dennis Healy. Good morning. Morning. If you were a uh, Chancellor and giving your budget speech today, would you be very nervous at this time? No, exhausted, really, by this time. Uh, the time for nerves has practically gone, and of course I did about six budgets when I was Chancellor, so it's not, it wouldn't be the first time. On your first budget speech, then, or your first major one, did you sort of practice in front of the bedroom mirror? No, it's too <laughs> long to practice. I know, it's I mean, very long, isn't the it? trouble. It's a long speech, and as a rule, you don't really finish it until the morning of budget day, because you've had a cabinet on the Monday morning in which you might have to make a few changes, you have to go and see the Queen about it on Monday afternoon. And then uh, Tuesday, really, is for the finishing touches. I had a terrible experience once when uh, I got the whole speech in front of me, about 60 pages, and uh, I go through it with a red pencil, because I hate reading a speech. I like to speak from notes. And then about 20 past three, just as the car was about to pick me up to take me to Parliament, I turned over the next to the last page, and it wasn't there. So it's your sort of punchline, wasn't there? Uh, no, absolutely. I'd have been absolutely floundering if I hadn't found it in advance. But finally, they found a, the missing page and shoved it in, so all was well. Where was it, the missing page? Oh, well, they just collated it badly. You know, they leaked. blew thousands <laughs> of copies of the, of the budget speech, and uh -huh. they just missed one out. When you go to see the Queen about it, I mean, you don't reel off the whole sort of four-hour no, speech, No, you don't. Do what you? you do is you send her a, a short summary of the main things in the budget, maybe a couple of pages of foolscap, and then uh, you chat to her and she asks you questions and you answer them as well as you can, and then maybe you talk about her children. <laughs> Would she, can I just ask one thing? Would she question it critically at all? No, no, never, no. She, she'd, she'd ask for information rather than uh, uh, criticise it. Mm -hmm. To get down to the nitty-gritty of today's speech, I mean, very obvious things are it needs to be a budget that's going to do something about the pound and something about jobs. What would you be doing? Well, I think I'd be worried about the situation we're facing. You see, we've got the record unemployment. It's gone up three times uh, since I was Chancellor. We've got record interest rates, the uh, highest since the Middle Ages in relation to the rise in prices, we've got uh, record bankruptcies, and uh, the tax burden is uh, very high. The present chance has collected £30,000 million more than I did in the last, uh, uh, or the Tory chances have. So I think the first thing to do would be to get unemployment down, and that means doing what President Reagan did, that giving more uh, money to people to spend, but it's not a good thing for jobs to give the money away uh, simply in tax cuts because uh, a lot of that money will be spent on imports and what we really need to do is to give the government money to spend on our collapsing motorways, on our collapsing sewage systems, our infrastructure as they call it, that's to say the, the basis of our whole economy on which the thing runs is the worst in Europe and recently the National Economic Development Council was told that if we don't put more money into it now, we shall be spending four or five times as much in a few years' time. And that produces jobs for people in England. Uh, it isn't spent abroad, and it produces a very large number of jobs. Could it, be giving them money, more money to spend? Sorry, I inter interrupt you there, because the overnight headlines in most of the papers mm. are that uh, President Reagan now looks as though he's in some trouble with the dollar because uh, there's been too much money to spend there, and they're going no, to have a banking crisis. No, the reason why he's in trouble uh, with the dollar, and it's not trouble. I mean, the dollar's grossly overvalued at the moment, about 40% too high. The trouble in the United States is they've done in spades what the present Chancellor is doing here, that's to say breaking down the barriers between all the various financial institutions, the building societies, the banks, the pension funds, and that means a lot of these organizations are doing things which they don't really understand, and the building societies in one of the American states have gone bust. That's what's happened. It's nothing to do with so spending high, too it? much, it's to do with financial deregulation, as the economists call it, and that, I'm afraid, is something that uh, Mr. Lawson and Sir Geoffrey Howe have encouraged here. It's one reason why Johnson Matthew went bust recently and Mrs. Thatcher had to nationalise it, because it started doing things as a bullion firm, like banking, which it wasn't really used to doing. But on a very simplistic level, if you argue that the government should be given more money to spend, it's got to come from somewhere, hasn't it? Oh, of course it has, yes. But you see, you can borrow money. Mrs. Thatcher encourages people 
to uh, borrow 25, 250% of their annual income to become a property-owning democracy, you know, to buy houses on a mortgage. Uh, and yet she thinks that uh, borrowing 3.5% uh, of your nation's income is a sin uh, against the Holy Ghost. Now, of course, that's absolute nonsense. The American economy is booming because they're borrowing 5% roughly of their annual income. The Japanese have regularly borrowed about 11% and they're the most efficient country in the world with high technology, very low unemployment, very low inflation. And we ought to learn something from the successes of others and not persist in giving the patient medicine from which he's going to die. Mr Healy, we'll chat again in a moment. Thank uh, you. But uh, throughout this morning's programme...